Hello and welcome to part 9 of U.S. History Online. Today we'll continue our look at Standard 7.9 and introduce the flower power movement of the 1960s and analyze its impacts on American society. Make love, not war. Don't trust anyone over 30. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. These and many more became slogans for an emerging youth culture, a counterculture, in the 1960s. The baby boom generation was entering its teen years, and in terms of sheer numbers, they represented a larger force than any prior generation in the history of the United States. As more and more children of middle-class Americans entered college, many rejected the suburban conformity designed by their parents. The so-called hippie lifestyle became synonymous with American youth of the 1960s. Displaying new attitudes about drugs and sex, communal lifestyles, and innovations in food, fashion, and music, the counterculture youth of America broke away from nearly all values of their parents. This counterculture was probably no more than about 10% of the American youth population. Contrary to common belief, most young Americans at the time sought careers and lifestyles similar to their parents. The movement embraced birth control and casual attitudes towards sex. Displays of public nudity and living together outside marriage became commonplace, shattering previously held norms. In addition to changes in sexual attitudes, many youths experimented with drugs. Marijuana and OSD were used most commonly, but experimentation with mushrooms and pills was common as well. A Harvard University professor named Timothy Leary made headlines by openly promoting the use of LSD. There was a price to be paid for these new attitudes. With the new freedom came an upsurge of venereal diseases, bad trips, and drug addictions. Over 2,000 rural communes formed during these turbulent times. They completely rejected the capitalist system, rotated duties, made their own laws, and elected their own leaders. Some communes were philosophically based, but others were influenced by new religions. Earth-centered religions, astrological beliefs, and Eastern faiths became enormously popular. Most communes, however, did not last long. A charismatic leader would leave, or the funds would become exhausted, and the commune would gradually dissolve. One lasting change from the countercultural movement was in the American diet. Health food stores sold wheat germ, yogurt, and granola, products completely foreign to 1950s America. Vegetarianism also became popular among many youths. Changes in fashion proved more fleeting. Long hair on young men was standard, as were afros. Women and men alike often wore flowers in their hair. Ethnic or peasant clothing was celebrated. Beads, bell-bottom jeans, and tie-dyed shirts became the rage, as each person tried to celebrate his or her own sense of individuality. The common bond among many youths of the time was music, centered in the Haight-Ashbury section of San Francisco. A new wave of psychedelic rock became the music of choice. Bands and artists like the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, and the Jimi Hendrix Experience created new sounds with electrically enhanced guitars, subversive lyrics, and association with drugs. Folk music was fused with rock, embodied by the best-known solo artist of the decade, Bob Dylan. When the popular Beatles went psychedelic with their landmark album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, counterculture music became mainstream. The flower power movement might be best known, however, for their opposition to the war in Vietnam, which we will begin to look at next time.